Hi, I'm Chuck Dorsett for Weaver Leather Craft, and we are going to make a gorgeous custom tool roll. We're going to have a great time doing it. Now, we're just scratching the surface. Here's what I mean by that. With my kit, I've got all my tooling stamping tools in here. Got everything I need. But the bigger picture, chef roll, knife roll, gun cleaning kit, modeling tools, paint brushes, calligraphy. Do we have a drummer in the house? If we don't, what a great gift for a drummer. Does anybody throw some darts? We can make a cool dart pouch. So there's no limit to the possibilities here. But let's get the feel for it. All right. Anything I use in this video, weaverleathercraft.com or check below. We've got links there. going to take you straight to the website. So as always, let's step over here, knock our pattern together. For our tool pouch, we could always pick just some generic outside dimensions. Or let's do this. Let's start with one center line, one tool, and every dimension will fall into place. Starting point. Let's lay our tools out on our work table. Let's include everything we're going to put in our tool roll. So lay these out, thus we can get a nice general feel for what goes where, okay? Starting right here, let's start with one simple pocket. It's going to be a tool pouch for four tools. Actually, two or one, and I'll explain that. So with this, I've determined one inch. That's a good distance between stitch lines for either a larger shank tool or multiple smaller shank tools. So from one center line, I'm going to add four pockets. Add three, five, seven, however many you want. Let's use four for our sample. So I'm going to start on my center line, one inch either side, one inch beyond that. Then I'm going to add in one eighth of an inch on either side for outside my stitch line. Four and a quarter inches, okay? We'll come back to that, come back to this. But laying that in, I'm going to need four and three quarters width for that panel so everything bends. Like I said, we'll come back to that. For depth, I could go multiple depths, but three and a half is a good depth. That's going to keep that tool secure, but it also gives me room to grab the tool. And if I've marked that tool, I can see it. So three and a half. We're going to drop one on either side. So therefore, all we need now, how much room do we need between these to keep our tool heads from rubbing together and damaging each other? Let's go three inches, ample room. So therefore, three and a half, three and a half, three, ten inches on the nose. So therefore, our width just fell into place. Okay, length. We're going to do exactly the same thing. Now for this pouch, it's going to be a little thinner because I'm adding two tool pouches and then one pouch or pocket for my swivel knife. So let's give that one and a half, one, one, and an eighth each side. Okay, that we know since it's a little bit smaller, it's going to fit into a four and three quarter inch panel. Okay, from there on our pockets, I love pockets on these. Now, side note, we've got a lot of hand sewing here. You don't have to go full out like we are, but it's our sample. Let's go all the way with it. On this end, I love a pocket for, for templates and French, square, uh, French curves. On this end, I have another pocket for patterns or tracing film. So with that, three and a half inches, that's going to be a good width. Again, make that your own, but three and a half is more than enough to keep that in both sides. So I'll need one on each end. Three and a half. Let's give that another half inch so that bends easily. We just fell into our dimensions. Four, four and three quarters, four and three quarters, four, 17 and a half inches by 10 inches. Very cool. Okay, let's jump over to our digital patterns and just take a little closer look. So on our main body, I've got this laid out and I've got my bend lines in there and I've marked in my pockets. So I know everything's going to fit and it's going to be centered. Now on this, I've dropped in two punch holes. We're going to drop in a piece of lace. We can go with all kinds of closures on this, but I like to be able to cinch that down with a piece of lace. Okay, jumping over to our next three pockets. Now we've got our outside pockets, three and a half by 10 and then our two inside tool pockets. So we've got three and a half depth, and on one, our smaller with our swivel is four inches, and then over here, four and a quarter inches. All right, last three pockets. And again, don't feel like you have to add every one of these. A lot of sewing here, but let's go full on. So pencil, we've got our strop pocket and our scribe pocket. Those are simply going to sit on our outside pockets. All right. So we've got a good feel of how to measure our pattern. 
let's step over to our main table and cut some leather. This is going to be easy cutting. We're just cutting boxes, and this is going to be extremely efficient, but a couple of notes, as always. First off, when I get a new hide in, I cut a spine off about two inches, make lace out of that. Cool point there. We're already starting on a straight edge. Secondly, the leather. We're going to use our Pines Mill. So this is a supple leather, but it's got a little body to it in comparison. This is my tool roll. Now, I've robbed all my tools for the sample, but this is our vintage cowboy. A little bit more supple. Problem is, this is an upholstery leather. So for us crafters, it's not really economical for us to buy a full hide. Well, it is if you're going to make 20 or 30 of these. So we're going to go with our Pines Mill. Rustic, it's a tool pouch. It's going to get scuffed. It's going to look even better once it gets a little use, okay? With our pattern, cool thing here also, we can always flip this and mark on our back with pen, pencil, or scribe. Makes it super easy to see. But over here, I can scribe this no problem. So let's butt right to our edge. We're going to cut each piece. Now with this, we need one of each for everything except for these two pockets. We're going to need two of each here. But look at that. We can drop that in. We are going to have almost no waste. Okay, let's scribe this in and then we'll cut. And we are scribed. There we go. Okay, one point I didn't mention. We need to flop this piece. So therefore, our swivel knives are opposing. Let's clean all this up. Now, when we're cutting, non-slip tape right to our edge and a clean new blade each and every time. This is going to keep us from having issues cutting or rippling. But at the same time, that's going to take cutting from a problem to no issue. And our last cut. Okay. Now let's step over to our punch table because we're going to put a thumb hole right here and we're going to use a round end punch to make that corner very clean. We're going to use our master tools three quarter inch round end punch. Now you can absolutely cut these by hand, but since we have the tool, let's use it. Okay, for the strop, good. Now over here in our corner, let's drop this round in right to our corner. And with our straight edge and our knife, let's cut from the inside of that curve out to our edge. There we go. Okay, looks clean and tight. Let's do the same thing over here. Okay, cut and ready. Let's step over to our pattern table. We're going to start gluing some pockets on, prep for sewing. When we're laying in our pockets on our flaps, I tend to cheat usually because what I'll do is just eyeball both sides. And here's a perfect example. So over here, for our, for our strop, I'm just going to lay that in. And I can see that it's parallel. The length from the bottom, not terribly important. I can put that anywhere. But you know what? For the video, let's do this right. So, so to save us some time, I've just dropped in a small round hole on four corners for my pattern. Same over here. So let's mark all four corners on all three pouches or pockets. Okay, there we go. Now the camera's probably not going to pick that up, but I can see those clearly. That's going to make sure we're clean and straight for all three pockets. All right, let's reset here, get some glue out, glue our pockets down. Okay, now on this, just speaking from experience, let's, let's do our best to just put glue on three sides and not four. Yeah, done that. Let's don't go there. So let's just drop some glue in. And this is a great white glue. Easy to use. It's going to stick very well for us. But all told, we just need glue here long enough to hold our stitch line down while we drop in a chisel. Okay, so let's lift that piece up. Grab that very carefully. And I'm going to lay that right in to my marks. Okay, there we go. Now, if we have a little glue, what we can do is just take a piece of our pattern and just squeegee that right off. That will disappear. Okay, let's set this piece aside. Add a little weight to that. Let that glue set. There we go. Let's do the other side same way. Okay, that piece looks good. 
clean and flush on both ends. Let's add a piece of weight to that. Then we're going to step over to our punch table and lay in our chisel lines. Now we've got our patterns cut out so we don't necessarily need these. But what I'm going to use my pattern for is just a straight edge. So I'm going to come in about one eighth of an inch from my side and my bottom and let's scribe in a line. Now we could use a groover here, but our leather's just a little too thin. Okay, and let's do that one line on our other side. Okay, so there we go. We've got a guide to stitch from or to lay in our chisel line. Let's do the same thing over here, but with this, we just need a line on either side because we're going right to our edge. And our last line. Okay, let's set this aside, pull out our chisel. We're going to use a 1 8 inch flat chisel. Now with this, what I want to do is on all of our pockets, I'm going to start on the inside and work my way out because we're not going to go all the way to the edge. We're going to have a stitch line across that. So let's take our first tine. I'm going to butt that just outside of my pocket. Let's lay that in our groove line. See if we got tines all the way across. There we go. Okay, let's pull that out. First tine, last hole, and let's stay in that groove line. Now we're coming down to our end. That's just right. I don't want that any closer because again, we're going to have a stitch line one eighth of inch of it, one eighth of an inch in. So first time, last hole, drop that in. Okay, let's do that. Same on the other side. Okay, let's jump over here. Now we need one more line here because we're going to drop in our spoon and our scribe. And we can drop this in either way. But let's go spoon left, drop that in, let's make our two marks, and then scribe in that line. Okay, so we need three stitch lines or chisel lines here, so we'll do the same thing on all three lines. And when we come down to the end, it's a little bit longer, so I'm going to add three sets with my six. Then I'm going to drop in just two at the end. There we go. That gives me just enough room from that edge. Now when we jump over to this, we're going to go all the way around. We're not butted to our edge. We can be, but let's do this. Since we've got room for error in this direction, let's take a single tine right in that corner. Let's drop that in at an angle. Now from there, let's come across the bottom. So what I want to do is take my two. I'm going to butt the edge of, of the first tine right at the edge of the hole, and I'm simply going to make a mark there. So therefore, I know exactly where my next hole is, so that remains consistent. Now let's work our way across. Let's come in from our other side, do the same thing. Drop that in. Okay, look at that. That's going to work just right. Drop one chisel right in the middle, and that's perfectly consistent. All right, let's do the same thing and work up to where we've got one tine on the outside of our pocket. And one more. There we go. That's just, it's a little bit long, but that's okay. Let's sing a, sink a single tine in there. Okay, these are ready to add a stitch. So let's jump over to our sewing pony, sew the pockets on our flaps. We're going to use a basic saddler stitch, so if you need to come up to speed on that, we've got a great video on hand sewing. We're going to use our John James number 18 needles. Love these. Good eye for our, our wax thread. Super strong, no sharp point. And our thread, the Ritza Tiger, 0.6 millimeter. Now, design point. Side note, we've got some gorgeous colors. Say we, we're going to use this for paint brushes or tools or darts. We've got some red or blue or yellow. We could always drop in a matching thread. That would be custom and beautiful. Okay, so let's jump back over. Need about four times my length. I tend to go a bit more just so I don't get to the end and have two little nubs trying to tie a knot with. So let's start right here. One needle, first hole. Got to remember our first hole outside of our pocket. Let's equalize out. Now, we're working with a thinner leather here. So what I'm going to do is drop in four stitches. Now I don't want to drop, I don't want to pull this too tight because if I do, I'm going to get some rippling across here. It's going to ripple up on me. But we've got a little bit of a trick that's going to help us there. 
So let's get four stitches in. And when I come out, I'm going to add just a little bit of tension and our fourth stitch. Okay, let's take our thread. I'm going to hold my project right at the end of my, my stitch line and let's pull lengthwise. There we go. That sinks that thread down in there. We don't get rippling and it looks clean and tight. Okay, I'm going to sew all the way around to the other side. We'll hide our knot. Okay, we're down to our last hole. Let's come through from the front and the back, same as every other stitch. But now when we come back through, what I'm going to do is I'm going to back up to my second hole and I'm just going to come through one ply. Let's pull that down, straighten it out a little bit, tighten it down. Okay, same thing from the back side. Let's come back to that second hole and come through from the inside. Okay, there we go. <laughs> took, a, took a second to find that. All right, now let's pull our thread taut. Now, I seem to have a, a knack for picking the darkest possible leather and thread for our videos. I apologize. Okay, so with this, let's do this. I'm going to take my right over my left, just doing a basic square knot, and let's push that down in there, but I'm going to put that on the end of my finger so I can tighten that knot a little bit deeper down in there. There we go. Okay, now left over right. When we get down to our smaller pockets, we've got a little tool that's really going to help us out with that. So there we go. Okay. And with our knife, again, as always, let's don't cut across our thread. Let's pull our thread across our knife, and I'm going to go right to the edge of the throat there. Very good. Okay. We're going to hammer this down, so it's going to look a little bit better shortly. But let's jump over to our other pocket or our other panel. Now, with our strap pocket we went all the way around now we're simply going to sew from our edge right to the inside of the pocket and we're going to hide our knot there we'll have a stitch line running across the outside so let's start right here now technically with these pockets these are going to be hidden or if we put a knot on the back side it's going to be hidden but let's go ahead and hide our knot on the face because that's what we're going to have to do with the rest of the pockets on our tool roll now, I've gotten to the end of this one line. Problem is, I'm never going to be able to get my finger down in there. So let's do this. Let's start our square knot right over left. Bring that around. Now, the piece that's going to have to push down in there, I've just got a little piece of dowel. I've got a cut in the end. So therefore, my thread will sit down in that. And I can push that, holding it, holding it with my finger. I can now push that down into the pocket. So that's going to tighten that deep in there for me. Okay, left over right, and I'm going to do the same thing. Okay, well, that looks pretty good. Now, what I'll do is I'll sew the other side, same thing. Jump over here. Let's sew our outside lines first. That way we can get our finger in there. Then we'll sew that center line and use our tool. And trim that off. All right, let's step over to our quartz, and we're going to hammer down our stitch line. Make that look clean and tight. In my opinion, hand sewing chromes will never look as clean and tight as a veg tan. The veg just has more body, but still looks pretty good. Now let's hammer down half of this and we'll see if there's a difference. Now visible difference between our stitch lines, hammered and not. More consistent, a little bit more even. We've closed our holes down. Looks pretty good. All right, so let's do the balance of our two pockets. Well, that looks pretty good. Very happy with that stitch line. We might have a little fuzz from our cut, but that'll go away in no time. Okay, main table. Let's glue our pockets onto our main body. We're going to scribe our bins in this. We don't necessarily have to mark those, but we're going to use this to center our four pockets. So from this end, I'm going to square across my top. There's four. Now I've got four and three quarter four and three quarter. Okay, our folds are marked. Let's set that aside. Over here, let's start right here. We're going to add our two pockets in to either side. So just like we added on our flap, let's drop in glue on three sides. Okay, we've got some glue. Very carefully, let's take that by the edges. And I'm going to lay that right to my edge, 
right between my two fold lines. There we go. Okay, that looks good. Clean across my edge, flush there. But also, too, now that we're going to going sky to sky or flesh to flesh, that's going to be a good bond. Okay, going to do the same thing on the other side and then with my other two. Okay, let's give that just about five minutes dry time. Let that glue set. Just like our other pockets, all we need to do now is lay this in and let's scribe in our stitch line. So we're going to do that on each edge and then let's mark and scribe for each of our inner lines. And our last line, okay, one point here. We've got some hand sewing to do here. But all told, sewing each one of these, just about two minutes. Okay, so let's step over, drop in our chisel. Now, same thing as our last pockets. I'm going to start on my inside, one tine out, and work my way down. The only thing is we need to remember, let's don't get too close to our edge, because we'll have a stitch coming through there. And two more holes. There we go. Okay. Just about three or four minutes to chisel. Looks good. Back to our pony. Let's hand sew. When we're sewing a floppy piece of leather, this can really be frustrating and time consuming. So let's do this. I've got a clip on a piece of suede lace with a slip knot connected to the roof of my shop. Now my slip knot allows me to raise or lower this. But what I can do is clip this onto my project, pull that project taut in my pony, now look at that. I've got a good taut surface right in front of me, and with my slip knot, I can raise or lower this as I need to. Okay, so we've got short lines to sew, 18 of them, but we're gonna blow right through this. All right, now last hole now. Took about an hour, maybe just a hair less. But the bigger point here, we're gonna enjoy this, use this, and love this about a thousand times that. So yeah, a little bit of time in sewing, but let's do this. I'm going to tie the knot. Let's jump back over because we're getting close to being done. Okay, to save us a little time, I've hammered down our stitch line, so let's don't forget to do that. Let's drop in our pockets. That looks good thus far. Clean, tight fit. In fact, look at our edge. Flush all the way across. Okay, so let's add glue to three sides on each flap. Glue that down. Okay, that looks good. Both sides flush all the way around. We took our time with our pattern. That's paying off right now. Okay, let's give this about five time, five minutes dry time. Okay, we've got some dry time there. Everything's set. Looks good, clean and flush. Let's flip this over. We're going to trim our round corners. We've marked that from our pattern. So let's trim all four corners. Okay, we've got our round corners in. Let's take our square and let's just scribe one eighth of an inch in all the way around and we can simply match our round corners when we come around those. And our last corner to mark in. Now absolutely use a template if you want to on our corners or even a small bottle cap. Okay, let's step over, chisel this because we're almost done. Now for this chisel line, one long chisel line, it's going to be a lot easier and a lot faster than these. But with our corners, remember, we can always mark with our two, punch with our single tine, then we're going to have a very consistent round corner. So all told, we can start just about anywhere, but let's keep that chisel as straight up and down as we can. Okay, when we're coming down to the end, Let's just eyeball this. Look at that, that is almost perfect. Okay, so let's back up two tines, drop that in, very consistent. Okay, again, the dark leather strikes. We can't see any of that, sorry, sorry. Let's jump over. We're gonna sew this, drop in our, our lace, we're done. Now, to make this easier, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna start right in the middle and I'm gonna sew around to about the middle of the pouch. It's gonna do two things. First off, we don't have to have this ridiculously long thread to try to make it all the way around. But secondly, we can hide our knot up under there easily. So therefore, we're gonna see no double stitch lines and no knots. 
and cut that off close. Okay, that looks good. I'm gonna jump over, hammer down our stitch line, join me at the main table, we'll drop in our lace. We didn't include this on our pattern simply because we could go so many different ways with a closure, but I love just a piece of thong. I can cinch it down. So with this, all I've got is a one inch spread between two holes, centered on one of the outside panels, centered left to right or top to bottom. Therefore, when I close this, that will tie on the outside, or I can fold it more like an envelope, still going to tie well for us. So let's drop this in, mark it, either side matters not. Jump over to our quartz, let's use a 1 8 inch punch. Easy enough. And let's lace. Now this is our Latigo lace, and I love this, exceptionally strong. This is going to last for years. So let's pull that through. We can close this. Let's bring that around about 30 inches, but that looks like it could be an awful lot, but that's okay. Simple project, easy to make, durable, and extremely helpful. I can't wait to put some tools in this and go somewhere. I'm not even sure where I'm gonna go, but I'll have my tools with me, and that's what's important. Now, options. I'm not gonna go on a full roll here, but think about this. We do a veg tan exterior. Tool it, stamp it, antique, dye it, and on the inside, our pockets, wet form those to fit specific tools. Sky's the limit on this. I hope every tool roll you make is spot on beautiful. Good luck with your projects.